the ancient stunnery town with programs just for you. The Plimpton Podcast. Hello and welcome to this special edition of the Plimpton Podcast. I'm Andrew Hill. Recently, the Red Cross Bookshop at St Stephen's Place held a poetry competition. They put on a night where people could come along and read the poems they'd entered and find out who the winner was. I attended in my capacity as Stanator of Plimpton. I was also on the judging panel, along with shop manager Emma Cayley and local poet and author Gina Stokes. We join the evening as shop manager Emma is giving a few words of welcome. Evening, everybody. Um, just wanted to say a massive thank you so much for supporting our first ever poetry competition and poetry evening. We've never done anything like this before and I was petrified it was going to go terribly wrong. But it hasn't, so thank you very much. Um, I really, really enjoyed all of your entries. I didn't realise I lived in such a talented area, to be honest. You're all amazing. Um, Just a little boring bit. Housekeeping. Um, If there is a fire, fire exit is the green door at the back and the front door. Um, We meet at the Iceland car park. If there is a fire, um, the signal will be a whistle being blown. And that's pretty much it, so enjoy. Okie dokie, I'm going to start the evening off. Um, My name's Gina, Um, I am a local author, Um, albeit on Amazon. I've not got a publishing contract, so if you'd all like to buy my book, I'd be really grateful (laughs) for that. The Curse of the Poet is available on Amazon, along with others. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the evening just by reading a few things that I've written just to sort of get you in the mood, really. Okie dokie, so um, here we go. And this one's entitled The Tumbleweed. Um, Drifting around on a wandering breeze, a free-spirited soul, no one to please. A sensitive soul in a body that's ageing. Friends always there, with laughter engaging. Depending on no one but going alone, with no one and nothing that he wants to own. Always finding company with friends in his life not thinking they'll settle with a partner or wife. Life isn't so lonely when you can find a friend. For a chat or a drink, it's a means to an end. Life passes by and no fears for the tumbleweed. He has everything and everyone he will ever need. But no roots to hold firmly when the friends are all gone. No one to hold on to when they finally move on. When the winds of change blow, he wants to be freed. And you can't make a route for a tumbleweed. Thank you. And there is one more that I am going to read to you. This one is a bit more poignant, and this one's from my book, and it's called Today I Walked. Today I walked alone in thought, as memories of you I thought. I felt your lips upon my own, even though I was alone. I felt your arms around me tight. I closed my mind, gave up the fight. And although I alone had walked, I heard your voice, we always talked. I saw you smile and read your eyes. The love in them was no disguise. No one could start to understand how I felt your hand within my hand. I heard your heartbeat in my ear, wished hard that you would just appear. I walked alone, but it seemed to be that by my side you walked with me. Thank you. Okay, and now what I'd like to do is just invite a few of you up. Um, I know we've had such amazing entries. So what we're going to do is call you up one at a time and, and just give you a chance to read your poem the way it was written. Because obviously when you've got a poem, it can be read so much different than just words on paper. <laughs> um, so we'll have The Ocean Symphony by Eleanor West Thomas. The sea of the sandy shore kindling its own symphony. It painted a picture with the moon and tide and danced in the wind in harmony. With clouds doused in marble and blue satin and the sky's breath howling through the night, the water hugged the cliff's jagged edges and transformed to a foamy white. The moon's rays rippled over the horizon and the stars reflected like glass, and as the sea waved with its powerful arms it picked up an ugly mass. Cans, bottles and paper bags, fish nets, carcasses tied in braids, cups, plates and your grandma's cutlery, the more we waste our deep blue fades. And as the symphony the sea once sung has turned to rattles and clanks, the water tries to return our messes, it's we the sea pays no thanks. Sorrow from the clouds now doused in grey, and sadness from the dying wind, the sea waved with its powerful arms and cried as the sandy shore thinned. Now the next person up is A World of Flowers by Sarah Adams. A World of Flowers. Poppies for Remembrance. Primroses for spring, 
Daffodils for Easter time, a rose for everything. Daisy chains for childhood, lilies mourn our dead. Sweet blossoms grace the month of May, chrysanthemums when we are wed. Buttercups are held beneath a thousand wandering chins, while honeysuckle's gentle scent blesses evenings drawing in. Dandelions bring wishes, and soft fairies on the breeze, a clock to puff away the hours, to tickle us and tease. Lavender may soothe us and bring a restful night. Tulips march the crowded fields, stunning, multicoloured sight. Bluebells bow in welcome in woods throughout the land, while snowdrops promise better times of warmth and hope in hand. Without this world of flowers, how dull our lives would be! Honey would not sweeten, and no wreaths would set us free. The grace in every petal, the beauty they bestow, walk beside our patterned lives. Peace, love, and hope to show. In the chapel's garden, next by Ben Sapple. In the chapel's garden. The smoke trail is rising through the cloudless winter sky. The frost is all but thawed now. In the chapel's garden stands all that warms my eye. A fire is gently crying. A tender maiden warming by its side. Embers are glowing, crackling in the heat. In the chapel's garden, butterflies of ash flutter to my maiden's feet. O oh joy, there are buds appearing, hyacinths bursting through the soil, though their bells are yet to chime. In the chapel's garden, one can reflect on all that's passed with time. Beneath the rambling ivy lies dear Lucy, half hidden from the eye, a crown of moss, her velvet mane. In the chapel's garden, spring shall come, but my love shan't rise again. Remembrance Poppies by Sarah Adams. I wrote this one because of the poppies up on the hoe. We went to visit them. Remembrance Poppies. The poppies cast their bittersweet beauty at history. Sprung blood red from the sorrowing soil. They're not a hopeful lemon yellow of daffodils nodding to the spring. They are not sleep-scented lavender or a snowdrop's pure white snow-clad strength. Not a misty blue woodland carpet as bells ring out for summer. The poppy's red is not a steamy backstreet lure or a postbox familiar promise. It is not the festive father's modern myth of a good heart's reward. Good hearts were not rewarded in those furrowed foreign fields. Their red is not a shepherd's delight or a magical ruby glitter, though there was, indeed, no place like home. Across the years, across the miles, the poppies still spill their red blood red into the hearts and souls and memories of those who were there and those who were not. The next lady isn't here. Her name is Sarah Smiles, and she sent us a lovely poem that hasn't got a title, and I will read it to you. We lay toe-to-toe, making sand angels, sea salt and crusted faces, pink tender arms and legs, books forsaken for quiet reminiscences. Do you remember when she would bring us here? We'd eat ice cream and go rock pooling. Walk along the shore, squirrelling away shells, crunch. You'd jump, crush razor clams. You helped me up, we head for the water. If she could see us now, what would she say? Two lost children trying to bring back the past, basking in memories, not making them. She'd say, grab a rock, aim for the horizon, Make it fly. It's all about the splash. And now we have New Year Hope 
by Sarah Adams. <laughs> the decorations are packed away. Another year has had its day. Resolutions have come and gone. We're sick of chocolate, not for long. A million tills have sang ka cards in the recycling bin. The future stretches out in front. We fill it with the things we want, good health, good friends, time to relax. Our children safe, our roof intact. Money for all we think we need, a bit more haste, a bit less speed. Passwords remembered, phones unlocked, a shorter queue next time we shop. Get connected, not put on hold. Those items on eBay quickly sold. Divided families back together. Resentment solved, bridges mended. A space to easily park the car and, perhaps, peace near and far. invite Barbara Massey up to read The Sign of Spring The Sign of Spring Winter's grasp will not let us go We cling to our snug fireside But when the gales have ceased to blow And weak sun shines We step outside Through shorter days and longer nights We yearn for days that aren't so mean Thoughts of a healthy walk excites Another place, a change of scene We swaddle up and head away Towards the woods and river bank, in summer's warmth the people play, though now it's cold and grey and dank. The naked trees bereft of leaves reach up and draw stark traceries, whilst far below the river weaves its winding way to distant seas. On grassy bank we stop and stare at such a pretty little thing, a single snowdrop growing there, a welcome sign of coming spring. Now we've got Plastic World by Jean Pardy. It's a plastic world we live in. It rules our working day, from household items, packaging and the way we pay. It's a plastic world we live in, from that we can't escape. Natural resource has gone, of course, so plastic's here to stay. What's happened to our forest, to rivers crystal clear? Progress comes at a price, but will it prove too dear? Now we have Children at Play by Barbara Massey. Parents smiling, watching proudly. Children playing, squealing loudly. Laughing, chasing, running wildly. Lots of blare, to put it mildly. Crowded play park, lots of action. Swinging, climbing, great distraction from computers and the Game Boys. And tiresome gadgets full of noise. The roundabout is whizzing faster. Will it cause a near disaster? Mothers holding breaths in fear. An accident is very near. Children never see the danger. Daring playtime is no stranger. When it stops, they form a conger, giggling as they make it longer. The keeper of the keys appears. Some protest and some shed tears. Homeward they trudge their weary way. They will be back another day. Okay, now we've got Homecoming by Andrew Jepson. The voyager's heart finds ease When sails, the dusk, return Past headland to home haven's beacon A clearly shining symbol of safety and rest And the uncertain lifting sea swell over the harbour bar Pitches the homing vessel as it passes. From afar, shore lights shimmer and glisten on the smooth, shifting surface of waters. Dark keys listen for the soft, lapping flood tide that round their weed grown timber swirls, and ships at anchor ride. My Angelic Nurse by Nicola Smith She's never seen me at my best, only at my worst. Her patience is ethereal, she's my angelic nurse. She brings me drugs to kill the bugs, food to make me stronger, oxygen to help me breathe and live a little longer. 
Cherubim and seraphim, I know match for her. She holds my hand and wipes my tears and I truly know she cares. As I face this battle alone, I know she's at my side. What a difficult, laborious job, yet she wears her badge with pride. Her vocation is the hardest of all, dealing with illness and death. Her work is truly a miracle, for this life I haven't yet left. Plimpton, Devon by Graham Sanford Plimpton, Devon. I visit from afar, walking Saltram's ancient walkways, abandoning the car. Myself and two four-legged friends, off the beaten track. I think that when we started out, only one of them was black. Drinks from streams and rolling in mud, barking delight, enriching the blood. Them, not me. I am strolling alongside, smiling at their antics, writing doggerel about labradoodles, as did Byron, Shelley, Keats and other lesser-known romantics. Ode to a Sprolly, which everyone knows, is now rarely recited at poetry shows. For about Springer Cross Collies, who needs to read when you've this, a poem about two lovely labradoodles running helter-skelter off lead? Thank you. I'd like to invite Sarah Adams up again with the bubble. The bubble. She wanted it to be just right, to watch it shimmer in the light, a perfect circle, rainbow bright, to float away high as it might. Five years old, no party dress, no ice cream, no egg and caress. One second hand doll. I must confess, inside I filled with tears, no less. To see her joy at this simple thing, a shining bubble on the wing. It's all it took to make us sing happy birthday and ring a ring. This barefoot group of boys and girls stare skyward in hopeful search, their dusty faces shrieked with dirt. Watch with wonder the magic spur. There are no mums or grands or dads. I dare not guess the terrors they've had. Hunger, fear, the wars they've fled. Till this bubble they've been led. And here each frightened shut-in child is slowly taught again to smile. Inside love's bubble they too may fly. Take their rightful claim to life. Their names may be all they had left. And so our greatest gift for them is a month, a date, to know just when a special birthday is theirs to claim. (laughs) Summer's Sun Has Crept Away by Sarah Adams Summer's sun has crept away The warmth that brightens any day Brings vitamins for which we pray, the long nights we fear have come to stay. Months of gloom now lie ahead, those cold dark evenings that we dread. We want to hide with covered heads, spend six months warm inside our beds. But the dark is not an evil place, (coughs) it's nature's way to rest and wait. And in the stillness new life create, to sleep and dream at spring's fresh gate. We've got a final entry. This is Pamela Trudy Hodge. Okay, this is Empty Nest. The year the carnations in the greenhouse grew as tall as beanstalks filling the air with the hot scent of burnt cloves, I found the nest of a field mouse tucked deep among jointed stems She had woven it from stirred leaves like pale golden ribbons, carefully lined it with fur and pink petals. If I had created such a nest, flower pink walls, petal scattered cushions, a mobile of spinning mice, would you have stayed, my love? I watched through misty eyes as you walked away, disappointed, puzzled, never once looking back. 
And just before we find out the winners and runners-up of the competition, we're going to listen to Gina Stokes narrating a couple more of her own poems. Two completely different poems, really. Um, This one's called Roots. I remember we slept face to face, feeling secure in each other's embrace, fingers linked so hard to part, hearing beating of each other's heart, breathing each other's breath as one, sleeping deep, and soft snores had begun. Our arms (coughs) around each other entwined, as I lay in yours, as you lay in mine, Two kindred souls locked together in bliss, a closeness, a caress, a lover's first kiss. Our long hair entangled, locking together, two sleeping souls linked in forever. Just a small moment in time to treasure, to recall the memory with pleasure. A sigh and a hope and a silent prayer that you felt the same when we fell asleep there. And then this one is all about having strength to carry on. And self-pitying is not a sin, feelings locked away within. Depression is a cross to bear, residing in your mind somewhere. A fear that's ripping at your heart, don't let it tear your soul apart. Thoughts you're thinking torment us. No thoughts are wrong, they're part of us. Tears that hide behind your eyes, cry them out, it's only wise. Emotions you can never hide, stirring up a storm inside. Hold your head up, smile once more. Control what's making you unsure. The way you feel, you know it's true. It's just the real you shining through. Hold fast to happy thoughts and know that even when you're feeling low, you're a person with so much to give. So seize your life and really live. Thank you very much. Um, So now the final thing to do is to let Andrew Hill come forward to say a few words and then he will be announcing someone else for us. Right, thank you very much uh, for coming along uh, this evening, but moreover for all your entries that you've put into this uh, competition. Uh, I echo what uh, Emma said at the start of uh, this evening, that we really do have uh, very good talent uh, here in the catchment area uh, of this shop. Uh, Last night uh, I was with the Plimpton Rotary uh, hearing young children from our secondary and primary schools uh, debating various subjects uh, and it's been a pleasure tonight to to come to this event as well and to hear all the uh, uh, readings uh, that you've done. Uh, The judges had a very difficult uh, task and uh, I I think I can speak for both my fellow judges when I say it was very difficult to to pick out uh, uh, the winners. Uh, There there was not very much at all between uh, the the winning entry and uh, those that uh, have not won um, this evening. After a while, we narrowed it down, I think, to around about eight or nine uh, entries <laughs> that went forward to the uh, final selection. And uh, we were sort of putting them in piles. And eventually, after uh, much ado, uh, we came to, uh, to a conclusion as to who was uh, the winner. Um, we've also got uh, a number of runners up. Uh, and what I would say to those who are getting runners up certificates uh, in a moment, you came within a whisker of actually winning. It was that close uh, to determine who was going to, uh, to win this evening. So thank you very much indeed, as I say, to uh, all your entries. And uh, now we're going to uh, proceed to announce the results of of today's competition. Right, so we're going to start with the runners-up, first of all. Uh, This one I know we uh, spent quite some time discussing as to uh, uh, whether it should go through to the uh, final three that uh, uh, we were going to uh, determine. And uh, this really did come very close, uh, and uh, uh, we did have quite a bit of a discussion about this one. uh, And uh, it's a very good uh, poem. So the uh, first of tonight's uh, runners-up for In the Chapel's Garden is Ben Serple. (laughs) Yes, I remember we had a discussion about this one uh, as well, and particularly with its uh, contemporary theme. So uh, the further runner-up this evening for her poem Plastic World is Jean Pardee. (laughs) (laughs) That does remind me, what I should have said uh, just now is we have recorded uh, your various narrations this evening, and they will be going online uh, fairly soon, so you'll have the opportunity, you and uh, your family and friends, of uh, being able to hear that. So uh, keep a lookout for the Red Cross uh, um, Facebook page or Google Plimpton Podcast, and uh, you'll find their details uh, of when they're online uh, ready to uh, be heard. Well, we heard this one uh, earlier this evening. Uh, I quite enjoyed this one uh, as well. Uh, so a further runner-up for the poem entitled The Bubble, Sarah Adams. So our further runner-up 
Uh, for the poem The Ocean Symphony, Eleanor West Thomas. All right. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Right, so now we come to the uh, runner up. We've got two runners up, yes, that's <laughs> well remembered. Right, so the first of our two uh, runners up for the poem entitled The World of Flowers, Sarah Adams. Okay, so the second uh, runner-up, we heard the narration of this uh, a few moments uh, ago. Children at Play, Barbara Mercy. Okay, so to the moment uh, everyone has uh, been uh, waiting for, what is uh, tonight's uh, winning poem? Uh, I was looking around as this uh, was being narrated this evening. I saw some smiles on uh, some people's faces and uh, some uh, nods as uh, people were applauding uh, at the end. So I think... uh, uh, this one will hit a chord with uh, many people in this uh, room this evening. It certainly hit a chord uh, uh, with the judges. The winner of the British Red Cross Poetry Competition for 2018 is Nicholas Smith with My Angelic Nurse. <laughs> so thank you all very much for joining in with this. Um, we're hoping to do this quite often now. Um, so if everybody is interested in future competitions it might be poetry, it might be short stories it could be anything Ooh. but if you'd like to join the mailing list with an email or anything if you'd like to pass it to um, Emma later on without you we couldn't have done it obviously um, and we'd like to think that you'll support it again and then it can only get bigger Okay. thank you very much thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.